I'm Eric Westridge, and I'm excited to be part of the California Miramar University Doctor of Business Administration project. And I was asked today to talk a little bit about how do you find your research topic. So I'm going to tell you how I find mine. And the first thing that I'm going to talk about is absolutely unimportant. The words don't mean anything. What's important is how you feel when you hear the words. So I'm going to start with word and then give you a moment just to kind of process what I say. And the first set phrase is this, make me happy. Now, when I say make me happy, if you're like most of us, your brain says happiness is a good thing. I like it, but I kind of get that hourglass that's just kind of spinning. It's not doing anything. But if I try a second phrase, see if that makes a difference on how you feel about the information. That phrase is, can you help me plan a romantic weekend for my wife and I? Now, if you're like most of us, you've already got a picture of a beach or a, a table or candles or something like that. Very good. And the point is this. Part of finding it information and getting your brain to help you choose your research topic is asking the right questions. So where do those questions come from? And that's where I spend the next just couple minutes talking about. And some suggestions are this. Your toolbox everything where you've been, everything you've learned, everything that you have associated yourself with. The second is your connections, not just what you've done, but the people you know. The people you know are a great resource. And finally, it's your passion where everything comes from. So if you're not passionate about your work, you're going to be awful tired of rewriting that uh, that dissertation for the 15th time, unless you really love what you're doing. So let's take a little look into your toolbox. My toolbox comes from work, um, my experience and education, and my association. So I worked for a large billion dollar software company. I taught at universities uh, like UCLA. I worked in the government. I, um, started a uh, tech startup tech company with uh, four 25-year-old kids. Um, I was the chief strategy officer for a performance marketing agency, just to name a few. Those are all experiences that I can use to figure out how will that project me into solving business's next cr crucial problem. There's also uh, education. What do I know how to do? Well, I know how to do project management, program management, chief engineer. I know how to scuba dive. I know how to teach martial arts. Um, I know uh, meteorology and oceanography. I know about supercomputing. Um, there's a lot of things that you can choose from that you've done, which could be excellent choices to solve our next big problem. And finally, there's associations. Uh, I helped uh, start a nonprofit that dealt with ocean sustainability and technology, sustainable business, a government organizations that built on technology and process, um, startup organizations, lots of startup organizations, and even dealing with the smart city. Where do we go in the future? Those are all great sources that I can ask a question such as, where does my oceanography or my startup experience, how would that help me get where business goes? Those are specific questions that your mind can get to work on right now. And you know who else can get to work on those questions? The people you know. So we've got the president here who has great insight, Dr. Ali Guyabadi. We've got Farnas, who you should see another tape, who did great. Um, standing right behind the camera, there is Dr. Stan Foster, uh, years of Hollywood and Director's Guild experience. Those are all people that as we talk about these questions can add more questions and add more insight to help you. So not only can you ask yourself those questions, you can ask other people those questions who guess what? what? We'll give you more questions. So those are great places. So besides your toolbox, your connections. And finally, your passion. So what am I passionate about? Well, I'm a passionate about startups. You heard startup organizations and business and community and entrepreneurship. And uh, if you put those things together and all the things I've done, what it comes with is for me. For me, it's how do you help communities get together, decide what they want, and grow. How do you turn these subjective ideas such as better business, lower crime, better education, 
uh, less homelessness. What does that mean exactly? So how do you get people to agree on subjectively what they want, but then turn it into, well, what does better business mean? And industry since the 90s have got some great tools, but as far as I know, no one's ever put them together in a kind of standalone magic box that goes from subjectivity to get um, objective actions and tracking out. The other problem is businesses are pretty easy because you've got a board, your C-level board, you can sit down and get everybody to agree. But organizations and communities are distributed everywhere and it's very difficult. So, uh, so if you look at what, in summary, what we're talking about from, from my point of view is use both parts of your brain. Use the creative part first without making any judgments, then start analyzing it. Ask questions from your background, your toolbox. Ask questions and discussions with your connections and go write down your passions and ask your passion what it wants. If I care about business, what could I do for business? If I care about startups or community, what could I do? Anyway, thank you for, the, for your time and I look forward to exploring with you and others this idea of a sustainability framework for community opportunity development. Thank you.